This is the sixth section of chapter eight, critical path analysis on Gantt charts. So what is a Gantt chart? So a Gantt chart is a graphical way, and it can also be called cascade charts as well, graphical way of representing activities on a network. Each activity is represented by a rectangle. We have the time scale along the top and delays to activities or floats are shown by dotted lines. Where we have critical activities, they are shown on the top row of a Gantt chart. Example 11. Here is an activity network for a project. Early and late event times are shown in hours at the nodes. Draw a Gantt chart to represent this project. Now, normally in the exam, a template will be drawn but for the purposes of this question, I'm going to draw my own template. OK, so here's my grid. First thing to do is to identify my critical activities because I'm going to draw them in one block in this row here. So this will be my critical activities. So we want to identify what the critical events are. And then we want to pick those that have a flow of zero. So my critical activities or critical events are the ones where we've got the same numbers in both boxes. So A is a critical activity because the difference between those is four. So we'll just highlight that. Um, C is critical, four plus five is nine. E is critical, uh, nine plus three is 12. F is critical and H is critical. So they're all gonna go along the top. Now notice, that the times here in the hours, the times go on the lines, not in the boxes. So for example, this um, bit here is the first hour. So the first hour goes from time zero to one. This is the second hour, third hour, fourth hour. So the times we put at the sides of the of the box on the lines and then the actual duration is between them so activity a starts at zero and it continues to four so this would be activity a here and we'll just put the letter a in it so we can see it then the uh, activity C carries on from that. That goes from four to nine. So all the act critical activities go here. So that has a duration of five, four to nine. So and that will be activity C. Then activity E follows that. And E goes from nine to 12. So all the act critical activities go here. There should be no spaces between them. And then last, uh, not lastly, then we've got F from 12 to 14. And then H goes from 14 to 16. So we'll just put in here F in there and H here. Right now we fill in the other activities. So we've got activity B here has got a duration of three. It starts at four. The earliest it can finish is tw uh, seven. The latest is four. There's a float on there. 12 minus three minus four means that B has a float of five. That means on our diagram, we can add five extra boxes at the end of B. So let's put B in. So B starts at four here. Its length is three like this, so that's activity B. It has, or it can be delayed up to time 12. So up to 12, we are going to put dotted lines in. And notice the size of that box of the dotted line is the same as the float for B. Then we'll move on to activity D here. Now with D, there's a difference between the start times. 
So we're going to show the earliest at which D can start, which is seven, not the 12, because we're going to put the sort of float at the end of it, not at the start of it. So uh, let's do D starting at seven. So we're going to have a box here, duration of two. And we'll put um, uh, D in there. And the latest it can finish is 14. Um, we can also check 14 minus two, minus seven is five. So we should have a float um, of five here, five boxes on the end. And that should take us to 14. So one, two, three, four, five, yep. So it all matches up. Whoops, that should be a dotted line. So we'll just change that to a dotted line like that. Then lastly, activity G, it starts at nine here, and it's got a duration of three, like this. So I'll just put G in there. And the latest it can finish is 16. 16 minus three minus nine is four, so we should have four boxes at the end. One, two, three, four, finishing at 16. There we go. So you can see how we've represented this uh, activity network in this Gantt or uh, cascade diagram. And these events here with the dotted lines, imagine those sort of can slide across anywhere between where these dotted lines are. So B could slide all the way across to these boxes here. It would not delay the project. We can slide D across all the way over to here and E all the way over, uh, G all the way over to here. Now that might be useful because what we might be able to do is then uh, slot these together by sliding them across so that we can fit all of these on one line because it may be that each line represents one worker. And at the moment, four lines, four workers, we might be able to slide those, put them all on one line without them overlapping and reduce the number of workers. We should now be able to do exercise 8F on page 239. Example 12. The Gantt chart represents a project that must be completed within 25 days. Given that this project is on time, part A determine three activities that must be happening at midday on day 10. Determine one activity that may be happening at midday on day 10. Now the first thing we need to be careful about is this line is not day 10. This is actually the end of day 10 because this is day one. So maybe we'll mark this in. Day one is here. This bit here represents day two and so on. So actually it's the bits between the numbers that represent the days. So day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six, day seven, day eight, day nine, here is day 10, and you can see actually midday day 10, it's this green line that's on this diagram here, halfway between nine, nine and 10. So the biggest mistake you can make is to say that uh, midday of day 10 is here, that being midday of day 11. So just make sure that you read it off properly. Okay, so part A, determine three activities that must be happening. OK, so their activities, even if they slide across, they're still going to be happening at that time. Well, the critical activities cannot be moved. They have no float. So activity C must be happening. That can't be moved anywhere. OK, activity B, even if that's delayed, can't happen. Now, activity D, D has got a length of seven units long or seven days long, even if I move D across. So if I move D across to here, to the latest time that it can finish, can you still see it still happens midday, day 10. So D must be happening at midday on day 10. It's the same with E, even if E gets moved across to here, to this very latest finish time, that is still going to be happening on day 10. So I'll put E. 
then if we look at activity F, now what happens to activity F? Now if I move this all the way across, F is 10 days long. So if it moved across to the very latest time that it can finish, I think this is 10 here, or any time after this day as it starts up, it doesn't have to be happening on day 10. So actually F may be happening at midday on day 10, but it doesn't have to happen. Yeah, it can be delayed beyond the, the midday of day 10 and H and I, well, then they're nowhere close. So actually it's C, D and E. And then part B, what we need to do is determine uh, one activity, additional activity that may be happening at midday uh, on day 10. And that is this activity F. It may happen. It doesn't have to happen. So that is just F, activity F may be happening at midday on day 10. So you should now be able to complete exercise 8G on pages 240 to 241.